In 2008, 22-year-old Tim McLean caught a Greyhound bus home to Winnipeg after working at a fair in Edmonton. After a few stops, a tall stranger boarded the bus and eventually made his way to the seat next to Tim's. What happened next horrified not only every other passenger and the emergency personnel who responded to the incident, but the entire nation who watched the aftermath in horror. Welcome to Macabre Storytime, where I tell my friends some of the weirdest, most brutal, spine-tingliest cases they've never heard of. Hello. Hello. That was really obnoxious. I apologize. Hello. <laughs> You're obnoxious. Hello. Yes, it was obnoxious. Yes. Hello. It's kind of like that. Well, hello there, too. Thank you. Hello, hello. How are you? Fantabulous. Good, 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 good. Uh, my name is Sarah. Good to meet you, Sarah. I'm Rhonda. Nice to meet you, too. We did switch places today. We did. A little different, but hopefully it helps with the creaking situation. I will <laughs> physically harm you. Stop it. <laughs> um. <laughs> it bothers you more than it bothers anybody else, I guarantee you. You can hear it in the... It's hard to edit out. Yes, I know. But it's not that noticeable when you're paying attention to what we're saying. It is to me. You're not paying attention to the little creak in the background. I'm it sorry. is to me. Stop being anal retentive. No. <laughs> <laughs> what I do. <laughs> um, you can't be anal retentive if you don't have an anus. But I... That's I, I do. I, I do have... I do have one though. Quote from Dog I'm just saying, I. You do. It doesn't count for me. No, but. I'm a know. human. You are a human, not an angel. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything exciting going on in your life? No. That we should chat about? Halloween's coming up. Well, yeah. Piper's going to be Sarah Sanderson. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why you said it like Sierra. <laughs> because I didn't know what I was saying until halfway through. <laughs> it's not how my name is pronounced. <laughs> Sierra. Sierra. Yeah. <laughs> She's Sarah Sanderson. Mm -hmm. And I am Winifred. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we only have two sisters. Um, I did get a cute little picture with the Sanderson sisters at the Renaissance Fair this weekend. Why don't you have a third? Because Christine's working and Kevin's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he can still dress up as the third sister. He could be Mary, but he, he he's not. How about this? I, I wanted him to be Billy. How much do you love us? <laughs> do you love us to a Mary degree <laughs> or not? Evidently not. <laughs> well, get rid of him. <laughs> if you don't love me to the, to the Maryeth power... The then what are we doing me and piper were already discussing next year's costumes i'm like so we're just gonna we're gonna stick to two people so we don't have to worry about like what everybody else is doing me. so mm -hmm. i'm like and we can always add people you know if they want to participate but um so yeah and we were talking about she could be dorothy which mm -hmm. i really want her to be dorothy one year <laughs> and i could be either the good witch or scarecrow mm -hmm. and my niece was dorothy one year she was like Maybe four. I know she was adorable. Adorable. Yeah. Yes. Dorbs. Um, and then I'm like, what would really be cute is Piper is um, into the Descendants movies. So the Descendants of the villains of Disney. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like, I could be Melissa. M oh, yeah. <laughs> M Melissa. You, you know her? Yeah. <laughs> Popular character. Yeah. yeah. I could be Maleficent and she could be Mal, her daughter. There and she's go. like, ooh, I like that. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, you, I could be Corella and you could be a puppy. She can be um, Princess Peach and you mm -hmm. can be Yoshi. Ooh, Yoshi. I love Yoshi. And I'll be Princess Daisy because I'm you love Daisy. always Princess Daisy. Yes, you are. Uh, just saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Or or you, if we just want to round out the princesses, you can be Rosalina. But, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. I'm not a blonde, though. Well, I mean, none of them are. You're well, not a redhead, they, but you're Daisy is close enough. You're not a you're not a redhead and you're yeah Winifred. So. Well, <laughs> see, I start I started last weekend with a wig, and we went to the trunk or treat. I had my wig on, you know, whatever, and then 
we went to a Halloween party on Saturday. Couldn't find my wig. <laughs> I'm like, so between Friday night and Saturday night, it disappeared. Who knows where it went? Don't know. Never found it. I'm like, well, I'm not buying another wig. I'm not paying $30 for another wig a week for right. Halloween. So I just put like pigtails on the top of my head and like poofed them. <laughs> <laughs> and here sprayed the crap out of it. <laughs> All right. Cool. Yeah. I also, um, we, I don't know if dressed up is the word I'd use. We had our um, annual trivia night at work. Mm -hmm. And it, we had it at Cybergs right by mm -hmm. my apartment. Mm hmm. And then uh, each team would have like a theme or whatever. And we came up with, uh, we're, my boss was like, well, you're doing this. I was saying something about the podcast and she's like, oh, what about something like detective themed or, you know, so we d decided to be uh, <laughs> in the name that we chose was defective detectives. <laughs> and awesome. so the four of us. Natalie made t-shirts like she bought the paper that you can like print on and then you can mm -hmm. iron it onto the shirt. Mm -hmm. So she got black shirts and she did this, printed it out at work. And, and I, she had me come up with like the design for it and it says De defective detectives. And then there's like a little picture, like a side view of like a Sherlock Holmes looking guy. Mm -hmm. And then underneath it, I put always two steps behind <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, we got stuff from like Amazon or whatever. And we had like magnifying glasses and my boss ordered this one thing. It had two hats. So Natalie wore the fedora and I wore like the Sherlock Holmes, like double build mm -hmm. hat. And we both had magnifying glasses. And then, uh, she wore the fake mustache and I had the pipe and we had, we also ordered this like crime scene kit thing that had like the little numbers that you put up mm -hmm. and it had like a, a plastic thing that had a, a body outline on it <laughs> and it had stickers with like bloody fingerprints and like blood splatter and bloody footprints and stuff like that. And we put that all over. And then I made, and I love these. I was so proud of them. Uh, we decided that Beth, our assistant manager, she was going to be Carmen San Diego. So we were looking for her because she <laughs> had a red trench coat and she got like a red hat and she had a red wig. Mm -hmm. So she was Carmen San Diego. We were the defective detectives looking for her. So I made, uh, a wanted poster of a picture of her in her outfit. Mm -hmm. And we decided that her thing would be that she had stolen all the Monty's because Monty's like our mascot, the little mm -hmm. the dog. And we have the little stuffed dogs that we give to the kids for who have kids clubs. Right. And so I made some missing posters of different Monty's from like different areas. Cause we <laughs> have like, so Beth made like different little hats and stuff for them for different like times of the year and holidays and stuff. So, like, we had one just plain Monty. So, he was Montgomery. He was from Sykeston because that's mm -hmm. where we're based. And then we had one with a, a Cardinal's hat. So, that was Monty. And he was from St. Louis. And then we had one with, with a sombrero. <laughs> <laughs> and his name was Montenegro. He was from Tijuana. <laughs> and then we had um, we had one that, with, with the little black hat that kind of looked like a beret. So, he was Monte <laughs> from Paris. And then we had one with a hockey stick, and he was Mounty from Canada. <laughs> Cute. <Yeah. laughs> Last seen ice skating in Saskatchewan is what I put on the poster. <laughs> and then my favorite one, he had like a top hat on, and his name was Lord Montague MP, which stands for Member of Parliament. Really. <laughs> and <laughs> on that one, I put that like he was last seen eating fish and chips in a pub in London. <laughs> And then I was like, his majesty uh, greatly like wants you to, I don't know, remember what I said exactly, his majesty something, something, basically wants you to call this number with information. And then I wrote, pip, pip, cheerio. <laughs> <laughs> and I put that one, it's hanging up next to the TV screen at my desk, <laughs> the one that near Natalie and I share. I just have it stuck there. Yeah, that's it's just cute. pip, pip, cheerio. <laughs> It's fun. I was proud of it. We did not win, though. We came in third. Hey, at least you placed. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess. <laughs> we did not win the Spirit Award or the trivia, as, you know, altogether. We only got three questions wrong, though, out of 80. So I mean, that's not bad. Pre we did pretty good. <laughs> I will say Natalie and I carried the team, but whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
Just because we're know-it-alls. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, so yeah, that was my little tidbit. Uh, I guess we should just get into this. Okay, what are we doing today? So speaking of Canada, which we briefly did with Mountie. <laughs> Mountie. You know, like the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, oh, by the way, that one, it said, have you seen this dog, eh? <laughs> <laughs> eh? <laughs> Sorry, Canadians. <laughs> um, but speaking of Canada, we are going to go visit Canada today. Oh, we're on a field trip. We are on a field trip. Um, I will put out a bit of a warning. I do not recommend uh, eating during this. <laughs> so that's why you said it's good that we eat after. That is why I said it's probably best <laughs> that we eat after recording. Um, not for the burping issue. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought you were talking about. I assumed. Um, but no, I would just say don't, you know, eat. Before you listen to this? Yeah, maybe wait until later. <laughs> uh, don't eat. Don't want or don't watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Don't listen before you go to bed either. I mean, whatevs. I listen to murder podcasts before bed. <laughs> you know, just relaxes me. <laughs> um. But yeah, just I'm just going to stick with the no eating part. Okay. Uh, so let's just do that. Um, so have fun. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You're going to love it. So I'm going to lose my appetite when we watch this. Maybe. When we watch this. Stop saying watch. I hope. You're going to watch me speak the words. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're going to have fun. I'm I'm looking forward to your this reactions. This maggots. Okay, good. <laughs> no maggots. Okay, good. All right. So what are we talking about here? We are talking about a gentleman named Tim McLean. On July the 30th, 2008, all that long ago, Tim McLean was returning home to Winnipeg on a Greyhound bus from Edmonton. Who is Tim McLean, you ask? Excellent question. Well, I could, is he? I could see it coming out of your eyeballs. <laughs> I'm like, who the fuck is that? Why do I care? <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> so Timothy Richard McLean Jr. was born on October 3rd, 1985 in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, to parents Tim McLean Sr. and Carol Dedelli. Okay. He had been working as a carnival barker at a fair in Edmonton. What's a barker? So that's the guy that's, I think that's the one that's like, step right up, step right up. No, he's the one that yells. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Hence the barker, gotcha. I guess, because you're, you know, barking. You're going to lose stuff, your voice, I guess. I every night. Um, but he was working as a carnival barker in Edmonton at a fair where he boarded bus 1170 to go home. Does 1170 have something to do with this? Just just the bus number he was on. Just okay. saying it because it adds a little speck of flavor personalization just, just like a pinch of salt to the story <laughs> okay um <laughs> the bus took the yellowhead highway through saskatchewan towards manitoba so just for people who do not know anything about canadian geography i don't know much but i do know that winnipeg is kind of if you shoot north from like i think like kansas city winnipeg is going to be like kind of just straight, straight up, north. up. So that's kind of, you know, middle-ish maybe of Canada. It's the Midwest of Canada. Sure. And then <laughs> Edmonton is kind of like uh, West Coast-ish. Not like on the coast, but in that gotcha. far, farthest uh, west. I don't know. What do you call it? Region? region? I don't know what they call them. I don't I, don't I know. would say region. I don't know Canadian things, but I, do, I just know that. Okay. So Edmonton's over here. Winnipeg's here. So we're we're going a distance on this bus, okay? We're traveling west for quite a distance. We're traveling east. You said west. You no. said it was on the west coast. Right, but he's leaving. That's where Edmonton is. He's leaving Edmonton to go oh, back to Winnipeg. Oh, going back to Winnipeg. Yeah. I'm sorry. You should pay. I know. <laughs> I was backwards. Um, <laughs> so yeah, he's, he's uh, you know, it's it's not a, a short jaunt on this bus. Not so, an hour car ride. No, just, just to set the scene a little okay. bit. He's going to be there for a while. On bus 1170. 1170, yes. Now, Tim sat in the back of the bus, just one row in front of the bathroom, which I argue is the perfect place to sit, because if you have to go to the bathroom a lot, you're right there. Although, if you don't go to the bathroom, and then you're just bothered by people going to the bathroom, maybe it's not the best place. 
Yeah, it depends on your character. But if you yourself are like, I got prostate issues, I'm going to be in there every 45 minutes, then it's a great place to sit. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, back to not talking about pee. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so at 6.55 p.m., the bus departed from a stop in the small town of Erickson, Manitoba, with a new passenger, a tall man in his 40s with a shaved head and sunglasses named Vince Lee. Okay. Welcome aboard, Vince. Yes, welcome. Maybe not so much now, or <laughs> what, knowing what I know, but, you know, whatever. Well, I'm going to say welcome aboard, you know. You're going to change your mind. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, yeah. And it's L-I, by the way, not L-E-E. -E. Just, again, little another little granule of salt. So Asian descent? Maybe. Maybe. Let's find out. Okay. Now, Lee originally sat in the front of the bus, but at some point he moved to sit next to Tim after a scheduled rest stop in Brandon. Okay. When Lee sat next to Tim, Tim really just barely acknowledged him uh, before he just fell back to sleep. He was, you know, trying to get some Z's. Uh, so he just had his head kind of against the window, had his headphones on, just went right back to sleep. What else do you do on a long trek? Take yeah. a nap. Nap or uh, like... Facebook reels, <laughs> Instagram reels, TikTok, mm -hmm. whatever you do. Um, <laughs> if you have internet. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> that helps. Now, before we get into the, uh, what I will call incident. <laughs> the incident. Let's introduce Vince Lee. Okay. Now, Vincent Wegwong Lee, who went by Vince. So, yes, Asian descent. I don't know why you think Wei that. Wegwong. <laughs> Wegwong. Uh, he was born in Dandong, Liaoning, China, probably butchered that, I'm sorry, <laughs> on April the 30th, 1968. In 1992, Lee graduated from the Wuhan Institute of Technology with a bachelor's degree in computing. So he's a smart guy. Smart guy, yeah. He worked in Beijing from 94 to 98 as a computer software engineer before immigrating to Canada on June 11th, 2001. And he became a Canadian citizen on November 7th, 2006. Okay. Now, starting in the fall of 2004, Lee worked in Winnipeg doing menial jobs at Grant Memorial Church for about six months to support him and his wife, Anna. Okay. So he's married. He's married. Wife is Anna. I don't know if she is also Chinese. I would just guess that I would she assume, is, but yes. I don't know. Um, uh, but, you know, he was a software engineer. Now he's doing menial jobs. You know, not that they're unimportant, but it's just a very different type of work. He's, you know, like janitorial type work and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. So pastor, and it just, this, it rhymes and it just makes me chuckle saying it out loud. Pastor Tim Castor. <laughs> <laughs> Another Tim. Pastor Castor, uh, who employed Vince. He said that he seemed happy to have the work and was committed to doing it well, which is great. Despite the language barrier that existed between Lee and the other congregation members. So his English, I guess, is not great. Okay. Now, the pastor said that Lee didn't show any signs of anger issues or other trouble before he suddenly quit in the spring of 2005. He then began working as a forklift operator in Winnipeg that summer. So he's just kind of bouncing around okay. unexpectedly. According to Lee's court psychiatrist after the bus incident, Lee said that he had converted to Christianity and was baptized while working at the church because he heard the voice of God talking to him. And I don't think he means in like a spiritual sense. Okay. Pretty sure he means literally. So we think he's crazy? I'm not going to use the word crazy. Okay. What are you? What were you going to use? Mentally unstable. Okay. That I'm, I'm going to be PC about that's it. That's an option. <laughs> I mean, crazy's not un PC. It is. <laughs> not as, not as un PC as some other words. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, but he said that this voice called him the quote third story of the Bible, as well as the second coming to Jesus. To Jesus. Second coming of Jesus, destined to save people from an alien invasion. Jesus is saving people from an alien invasion? 
he is the second coming of Jesus who is destined to save people from an alien invasion. Oh. It's not that Jesus is going to come. It's that he is the second coming. Now I'm going to rewind just like a half a second from that. I asked Frank about this because Frank used to be religious, read the Bible, you know, all that stuff. I asked him, what is the third story of the Bible? He had no idea. Do you know? I do know. Okay. Uh, when you said that, I was thinking, I'm like, what? Qua? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's obviously early, like, Old like, Testament, but. Does he mean, like, the third, like, book of the Bible? Or, because he just. That's what I would think. Because that's the, that was a quote. That the voice called him the, quote, third story of the Bible. So if anyone, and I even tried to Google it, didn't see anything. So if anyone knows what that is, feel free to let us know. So Rhonda picked up a Bible from her shelf, not like the store. And <laughs> <laughs> I ran to the store real Let quick. me run out and grab one. Um, <laughs> uh, so the third book of the Bible is Leviticus, but I don't know, like, what the actual third story yeah i don't know if that the there's like an overarching theme in leviticus that he is referring to or i don't know or if it's part of genesis or if it's just cr crazy talk as you as you said <laughs> i mean obviously genesis starts out with the creation of the world right. and then creation of people right. is involved in that i mean i i don't know i have no idea no clue something that comes after the creation of people i don't know i guess <laughs> Uh, but that's that's what this voice told him. He's okay. So he's, he's the second coming. He's unstable. A little bit. I'm not gonna believe he's the second coming of Jesus, um, and not just because I don't buy into I religion don't, stuff. I don't <laughs> believe any person is the second coming of Jesus. All right, so we're on the same. We're on different buses, but on the same track. Yes, so we're okay. on the same road. Exactly, side by side. Mm -hmm. uh, now, in preparation. For this, you know, alien invasion business to for him to save the world and whatever. Uh, the voice would regularly order Lee to travel through the country either on foot or by bus, often leading him to disappear from home for several days at a time. Okay. Not sure what exactly he was doing on these little jaunts, but... Leaving Ann alone. Annie? Anna. Anna. Anna, yeah. Somebody. That woman. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> no. Due to his paranoia that he was under constant threat by alien invasion, Lee began to carry a buck knife on him for protection. Okay, fine. Protect yourself. Uh, however, following an incident in 2005 where he was found wandering a highway to Winnipeg by the Ontario Provincial Police, and when this happened, he stated that he was, quote, following the sun at the command of God, of course, Lee was examined at William Osler Health Center. However, official records show that he was never documented as having mental illness. I would question the doctors working at this health center. <laughs> so uh, they never they never documented him as having mental illness. Right. Um, and I, I am not a, a doctor of any kind. Um, and it's not just what I know now about the story, just what I've heard so far. I, I could make an armchair diagnosis that, uh, is 100% spot on. <laughs> Schizophrenia? Maybe. I don't, I'm not going to say anything. We're, we're not, you know, let, let me get there. Um, <laughs> I did the research. Let me, let me do I that. researched this. <laughs> So, um, after this incident, he first he moved to Edmonton, 2006, abruptly leaving his wife in Winnipeg for some reason. His jobs while he was living there included working as a janitor, a mechanic, a cashier at Walmart, McDonald's, and newspaper delivery. So he is all over the place. All over the place, especially for someone with an education of a software engineer. Right. Like, I don't know. Like, I know a lot of people when they immigrate to the U.S., like, they, they're they doing something. They'll do something like, you know, I was here. I was a doctor. And, and then now that I'm here in the U.S., uh, I'm I'm a I work at, you know, Walmart. Like, yeah. But <laughs> software engineer, like those are that's like it's not something that's 
particular to one country. That's well, something yeah. that could be. But is it with the language barrier, though? True. Because he apparently was not, you know, great at English, I guess. I'm sure he could find something, but that's that's beside the point. I, I don't know. Um, but, like, I worked when I worked at Walgreens a billion years ago, <laughs> uh, there was a Russian lady that worked there. And in Russia, she was, like, a chemist or something. Uh, but then she moves to the U.S. and she's working at, um, you know, at Walgreens. And the, the just it, ha I know it happens a lot where you're doing something like doctor, lawyer, you know, whatever mm -hmm. in your home country. And then you immigrate to the U.S. and then you're just kind of yeah, whatever, you know, all whatever those you can find all those high class jobs you're taking away from people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, uh, mean the ones that the Americans don't want to do. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So his delivery boss described him as being reliable, hardworking, and not showing any signs of trouble. Okay. Upstanding citizen. Yeah, he's good, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but four weeks before this bus incident, Lee was fired from his job at Walmart after a disagreement with another employee. Couldn't find anything on, like, what the disagreement was about or if this was just like they yelled at each other or if it got physical or anything like that. Mm -hmm. All I saw was a disagreement. And then he requested time off from his delivery job to go to Winnipeg. So he's going back to Winnipeg for a job interview. Mm -hmm. See his wife, maybe. Maybe. Who, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're here, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Guess I'll stay at my house. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's rewind a little bit before we get to the bus incident and track Vince Lee's movements for the couple of days leading up to it. Okay. okay. At 12.05 PM on July the 28th, Lee boarded a Greyhound bus in Edmonton bound for Winnipeg, just like Tim McLean did a few days later. On July the 29th, around 6 PM, he got off the bus in Erickson where there was a stop. He didn't just like, Jump. <laughs> uh, Excuse me. I'm just, gonna get just, just uh, like kick the door open and mm -hmm. jump out. Um, but when he left the bus in Erickson, he had at least three pieces of luggage with him. And he stayed the night on a bench next to a grocery store. I even read that the people who like ran the grocery store would see him out there and were really like put off by it, kind of creeped out by this strange man just sitting on the bench all night. I would be do be yeah. like uh, WTF. Yeah. Apparently, uh, one witness said that he was out there at 3 a.m. sitting, and this is a quote, bolt upright with his eyes wide open. That would creep me the fuck out, too. <laughs> like, what are, you, what are you doing? <laughs> Everything okay over there? He's seen aliens. Maybe. Maybe he, they're talking to him. I don't know. Um, but on the morning of July the 30th, so the following morning, mm -hmm. still sitting on that bench, he, for some unknown reason, decided to sell his new laptop. He had like a little sign and I think he had, had on there like $600 or best offer or something like that for his laptop. Well, he wound up selling it to a 15-year-old boy for $60. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Sixty dollars was your best offer, I guess. <laughs> I guess no one else offered anything. I don't know. It is weird. Just a a strange man sitting on a bench for literally hours, straight up, eyes wide open, still on his laptop. Do you want to buy my laptop? <laughs> like, well, no, I do not. <laughs> no, sir, I do not. <laughs> um, I'm going to be buying. I don't know what is on that. I don't want to know. <laughs> be buying police evidence or something. Well, funnily. Uh, funnily? <laughs> well, I'm just going to continue. <laughs> Funny that you say that. But uh, later on, after all this, the police actually like confiscated the laptop from the boy, but they uh, replaced it with a different one. So they, oh, they gave him a different laptop. Well, that was kind of That them. was nice of them. Yes. Well, they're Canadian. Yeah, they do stuff like that. Yeah, they're nicer. Than <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we're back to the evening of July the 30th, and Vince Lee is sitting next to a sleeping Tim McLean. Okay. So now we know kind of what's led up to this moment. All righty. And as I said, Tim has barely acknowledged this stranger sitting next to him, much less done anything to him. 
to even kind of deserve what happens next. I mean, I would say nobody deserves this, but I mean, he was sleeping. He was literally doing nothing. Uh, But Lee produced a large knife out of his, I don't know, pocket, I guess. And uh, this knife was described by one passenger as a Rambo knife. I don't know what that means. I get like a big hunting knife, I guess. Maybe. Uh, but he pulls out the knife and he begin, begins. Okay. Begins? Mm-hmm. And he begins stabbing Tim in the neck and chest. Ow. Yeah. Passengers like, later. What the fuck? I'm right. Sleeping. <laughs> rude awakening. <laughs> <laughs> Very rude. Yeah. Uh, passengers later recalled Tim's screams sounding like the combination of a dog howling and a baby crying. Uh-uh. And that description, like, hurt me mm-hmm. when I read it. <laughs> like, it sounds de- I, I physically, deafening. yeah, I physically felt that. <laughs> now, the whole time Lee was attacking Tim, his face, and this is according to other bus passengers, completely expressionless. There's Lee's- no... There's no anger, no rage, nothing. On Lee's face. On Lee's face, yeah. Okay. I'm sure Tim had a few <laughs> expressions. I'm sure. No, Lee. Just, just verifying. Yeah, yeah. Lee, nothing. Nothing was there. Now, remember, these people do not know each other, and there is no legitimate reason for Vince Lee to be attacking Tim McLean. Just literally out of nowhere, as far as everyone but Vince Lee is concerned. He's the only one that, like, knows why. He's an alien. Can I read <laughs> my notes? <laughs> now, as soon as the other passengers realized what was happening, panic starts to set in. I mean, how do you not realize that? But you stand up, turn around. What the fuck? Well, is because going on? I think probably it might take a second because you're you're not expecting that. That's so unexpected and like something you'd see in a movie or something, and it's happening right in front of you on this greyhound bus like yeah is this actually happening am i asleep what is this real (laughs) it's real okay Ah! (laughs) like (laughs) takes a minute to to sink in right (laughs) so panic is setting in and the the other passengers are all screaming for the driver to stop the driver he pulls over side of the road and all the passengers well most of the passengers flee the bus which is what you should expect. Right. One mother who was sitting near where the slaughter was occurring actually threw her toddler like several rows up the aisle, like toward the door in an <laughs> attempt to like get the toddler away from this danger. Just you never know. Right. Get the kid away from right, the danger. Just throw them up there. Uh, another passenger who was a former member of the Canadian Special Forces, he tried to get this another male passenger to help him rescue tim there's no rescuing him well they didn't know that uh but this other passenger uh they were like nah and they f- they fled the bus <laughs> <laughs> I know. like i no, no thank you not get involved <laughs> right so lee then chased the remaining passengers off the bus slashing at them with his knife as as he chased them and the driver closed the door between lee and the passengers who had fled the bus so Lee is now on the bus with Tim, and all the passengers have and the driver have run off the bus. They're outside. How did he? Is there a way to close the door? Apparently, on the outside? apparently there is because he did. Okay. <laughs> now, realizing that Tim was already gone, this former special forces officer he teamed up with the bus driver and a truck driver who had stopped to assist the pulled over bus. He just saw the bus pull over and was like, oh, maybe they need help. I'm a friendly Canadian. I'm going to see. I mean, you and would expect that. Maybe in Canada. But anyway, yeah, in Canada. Right. right yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, he's going to wish he hadn't, but whatever. We'll get to that. <laughs> um, but so this. This should have just minded your business. This former special forces officer, the bus driver and this truck driver, good Samaritan truck driver guy. They kind of teamed up to ensure that Lee could not get off the bus they're like we know this guy is dead we cannot save him we can't help him let's just keep him trapped here until the police come essentially 
So uh, the truck driver, he goes and gets, like, hammers and crowbars. Because, again, this is Canada. They're, they're not all packing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and they're they're using these to, to you know, as, like, weapons in case he makes his way out of the bus. They're like, this is what we have to work with here. Why don't you just pull his truck next to the bus so at least he could block part of it? I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it wasn't possible. Maybe it was, like, a... I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you, I mean, you want my opinion on this stuff, and I'm like, it's a 18 wheeler, I assume. But it's also a really crazy situation, and you're not necessarily going to be thinking super clearly. But if you're trying to block someone from getting off the bus, what better way to do it than block the bus? But you can't block all the windows. You can block one side of them and get another truck driver. Hey, get on CB radio. Hey, breaker, breaker, one night. Get over here and block this other side of this bus so we can. Maybe it didn't. Maybe it wasn't that kind of truck. It just said it was a truck driver. Doesn't mean it's a semi. Maybe it's just like a bread truck. I mean, it's still length. Um, not a bread truck. Like a bread truck or like a an ice truck. Still like a length. refrigerated truck. Still it's not going to be that big. Okay. Let's not get into the length versus girth <laughs> discussion. Um, <laughs> it's a whole other story. <laughs> a whole other podcast. Yes. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, so they're doing this to keep him, or they they have these weapons, just in case he somehow makes it out of the bus. Because they have closed the door. He's locked in. Okay. Now, to keep him from driving the bus away, this is smart. And also interesting, I didn't know that the buses had this. The driver engaged the emergency immobilizer system, which would which rendered the vehicle inoperable. He couldn't physically drive the bus. Good. So he was stuck on it on it on an inoperable bus. What was that sound you just made? It was a burp, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so he was stuck on an inoperable bus. Good. Okay. Now after chasing all the passengers off the bus. Lee then returned to Tim's body, where he uh, decapitated him, and then he um, uh, he held up his decapitated head and displayed it to the bus passengers who were outside. That was nice of him. Yeah, it was great. Um, after he showed off Tim's decapitated head. Lee then returned to Tim's body again, and he, um, this is where the no eating part comes in. Uh, he started severing off some parts of his body and, 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 and ate them. Ew. <laughs> Just, um. Yum. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm good with dinner tonight. So. Uh, well, I'm not. I still want to eat dinner. <laughs> <laughs> it so, takes a lot to turn my stomach completely off. <laughs> so I'm picturing this guy. He's like, hey, look what I got. I got this guy's head. And then Mike drop. He just drops it and walks away and then starts, you know, making a sandwich out of his body. Wow. He's like, I don't think he had like bread on him. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. It's like, um, I'm going to sever off some of the arm. Let's get some of that muscle. We don't want the hair. Yeah, no, no, no. That's uh, gross. The muscle's the good stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, that's what we eat on an animal, so I would assume. That's why I said it. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, at 8.30, the RCMP, which, as I said, Royal Canadian Mounted Police, in Portage La Prairie, they received a report of a stabbing on a Greyhound bus west of the city. Okay. Okay. That's definitely part of what happened. Yes. Um, they part are, of it. <laughs> right. They arrived to find the suspect still on board the immobilized bus. Great. And the passenger's driver and that good Samaritan truck driver, they were still standing guard with their, like, hammers and crowbars to keep Lee from escaping. Okay. Cool. Everyone's just really, really great. Uh, except for Lee, of course. Um, everyone's just... And Tim. Let's get together and... Be great people. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> now, by 9 p.m., or that's 8.30. By 9 p.m., the police were in a standoff with Lee and had summoned special negotiators and a heavily armed tactical unit. Because remember, this is Canada. Not all police officers have weapons, yes. as in guns. Mm -hmm. Now, Lee was seen pacing the length of the bus, and he continued to defile Tim's body and eat pieces of it. It's disgusting. At one point, officers heard Lee say from on the bus, he said, I have to stay on the bus forever. 
I mean, I guess you got meals for a couple days, but, you know, it might get bad. After. That was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> You're terrible. I mean, that's, I'm trying to get into his mind. Don't even try. Just leave it alone. <laughs> Just leave it alone. Um, <laughs> Now, meanwhile, passengers from the bus were finally transported from the scene to the Brandon RCMP station to be interviewed. At 1.30 a.m. on July 31st, the following morning, the standoff finally came to an end when Lee attempted to escape by breaking out through a window. But he was arrested pretty much after he went out the window. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was shot twice with a taser, good, uh, <laughs> before being handcuffed and placed in the back of a police car. Um, also, let's not eat during this part. Put your popcorn down. <laughs> Parts of Tim's body were retrieved from the bus in uh, plastic bags because he was cutting them up. Uh, uh, however, his ears, nose, and tongue were found in Lee's pockets. Oh, he was taken seven years. Even oh, snacks for later. For later. <laughs> um, like, what? Which were they? Souvenirs or snacks for later? <laughs> Maybe both. I don't know. Uh, Maybe both. <laughs> now, Tim's eyes and part of his heart were never recovered, and were presumed to have been eaten. He ate his eyes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> um. Should I mean? Yeah. I've dissected eyes before. It's hard because they are slimy. <laughs> um, I don't want to know. Yeah. Mm. Biology. Sheep's mm. eyes. Not just for funsies. <laughs> like, just dissecting eyeballs on Give my me kitchen your eye. table. Yeah. Um, you don't need that. Yeah. No, it's fine. Um, to make this horrific story even sadder, five months after Tim's death on December 21st, 2008, Tim's girlfriend gave birth to their son. Of course she was pregnant. Yeah. We didn't talk about her, his girlfriend. We talked about... We did not, no. Vince's wife, but we didn't talk about his girlfriend. Right. Well, we just kind of mentioned his wife. We didn't, like, go into details. Well, yeah. But, you know, he had a wife. We didn't talk about Tim's... Right. Well, Tim had a girlfriend. He did. Who was with child. And an unborn child. Yes. Now, let's talk about the trial. Vince's trial. And, and you're like, uh, trial? What is there to... <laughs> to to try him like it's obvious like right he was caught in the act several witnesses <laughs> with you know 30 witnesses or however many people you can fit on a greyhound bus right now this is less about did he do it or not and more about his whether or not he was criminally responsible that's what this trial was about so was he unstable type stuff right i mean he clearly was but anyways well, i mean uh, <laughs> you can't really do this without being unstable well i mean you can i mean not wouldn't really. recommend it but whatever <laughs> i mean if, if you have the power to do this <laughs> to eat a person and to eat a person and everything and, and not out of desperation right and it's not you know on mount everest trying to survive then they're, you're not quite right i would i would say yeah something's off yeah there's a think? screw that that came off came off um came loose something. right just a little bit uh so his trial began on march 3rd 2009 with Lee pleading not criminally responsible on account of mental disorder. This means he accepted that the offense occurred and and that he did it, but he claimed that he was unable to form the necessary mental element or what we like in the the field they call mens rea like, mm -hmm. to to be responsible for this. Like I don't know, like he uh like, yes, I did it. It happened. But I wasn't, you know, so to speak, in the right mind, as people right. might say. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't know, like, what that this was wrong, essentially. It's about, did you know it was wrong? And honestly, no, he didn't. And we're about to get into to that. But, but that's what, like, insanity... It's not a, a medical term. That's strictly a legal term. Right. So basically it's did they know what they were doing was wrong. Now, Stanley Yarin, who is the court psychiatrist I mentioned a little earlier, mm -hmm. he said that his patient's schizophrenia 
which, yes, you were correct. He Yay. was schizophrenic. Rendered him inculpable as he had been under the false belief that McLean was a force of evil and posed an imminent threat to himself and others. In Lee's mind, Tim was a demon in disguise and an alien who needed to be destroyed, and he felt it was necessary to mutilate his body in order to keep him from coming back to life. But he ate his body. So where did that come in? I guess that's also to keep him from coming back to life. I don't know. Um, that just makes you part him. I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> but that's the thing. I can't get into the mind of someone with schizophrenia because as far as I'm aware, I am not schizophrenic. So <laughs> as far as I'm aware, yes. Right. So I'm a lot of things, but that's not one of them. <laughs> now, both the defense and the prosecution were in agreement with Yarn's assessment. They're like, yeah, we... 100%. Yes. He schizophrenic and this is what he believed even though like to us it sounds crazy obviously but to him this is the way it was. But wasn't he not said anything about mental dis disorders when he was in that one place? Right. They there was no record of him being classified as having any kind of mental disorder, which is why I highly question uh the work that happened there because even just from the little bit that that i read about earlier he was clearly schizophrenic that's that's classic paranoid schizophrenia yeah schizophrenia doesn't just pop up one day it's it builds it does a little bit yeah uh and it's it's not like you're born acting with the schizophrenia it will come about yes at one point Obviously, like, not obviously, I don't know why I said that, but, like, men suffer from it more than women. And I want to say men, when they, when it kind of emerges in them, it's at a younger age than women, but I could be wrong about that. But I think with men, it comes out earlier, usually, like, in their, I think, in their 20s. Mm -hmm. But with women, I think it emerges a little bit later. I could be wrong. I might have it backwards. But I feel like that is correct. right. But either way, it doesn't just pop up one day in your 50s. It's building throughout your life. Yeah. It's not like you wake up one day and you're like, oh, aliens. Right. God wants me to kill aliens. Right. No. So there was no way he was in this facility that said, oh, you have no mental disorders. And then a few years later, you know, he's he's tried for murder that he committed, diagnosed schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. And... Not really cleared, but, you know, right, yeah. voted that, not voted, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I know. What you mean. <laughs> that he was not there. He was. He's not culpable for this. Right, right. Schizophrenia kept him from being responsible for the murder. Right. And that's why I just, I'm very confused about this first health center because he was picked up. He was wandering a highway saying that he was following the sun. Because that's what God told him to do. Like, I am not a psychologist or a psychiatrist, but I do have a minor in psychology, so I have taken classes. But, like, that is just textbook schizophrenia talking. Right. So I, I'm just, I don't understand how nothing was, nothing came Excuse of that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand how nothing came of that. And I know there's probably going to be people out there who are, like, yelling at me about uh, armchair diagnosing Diagnosis. someone because of this kind of stuff. But like I said, these are, like, classic symptoms that you see with people displaying schizophrenic traits. Like, right. I, I, I don't know what else to say. But <laughs> like, mm -hmm. it's just. Right. Um, so, so, like I said, uh, the prosecution and the defense both total agreement with this assessment and they spoke in favor of involuntary commitment to a mental institution rather than prison time. Okay. okay. Yeah. I, I, yes, I agree that that is the correct path. Now the presiding judge accepted this diagnosis and ruled that Lee was not criminally responsible for the killing. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm on board with this. Vincent Lee was remanded to the Selkirk Mental Health Center, 
So a different health center than the one that did not say he was say he was anything. <laughs> now, while the judge, lawyers, and psychiatrists might have all agreed that Lee shouldn't be held criminally responsible for Tim's death, Tim's mother, Carol, vehemently disagreed with the ruling. And this is a quote that I'm about to read. She said, he did it. Whether he was in his right frame of mind or not, he still did the act. There was nobody else on that bus holding a knife, slicing up my child. And this is what she said after the judge handed down his decision. After the trial, Tim's mother created the Dedeli Foundation. That's her last name. I think that's how you say it. Mm -hmm. uh, Foundation for Life, actually, is what it's called. To pursue changes in the law. This is where I get off the bus, so to speak, not because they're on a bus when this <laughs> happened, but uh, she wanted anyone who, and this is important, voluntarily takes another person's life to lose their freedom for the rest of their life, regardless of whether or not they are declared not criminally responsible. And to that, I would ask, but... If they're not criminally responsible, was it voluntary? Right. That's the whole point of not being criminally responsible is that you, you couldn't make the proper decision. Your brain was not firing correctly for you to right. make the decisions and right. make the right everything to stop yourself from what you knew was wrong right it, there was nothing in you that was like wait a minute this guy is not a demon and an alien sent right. here everything was devil. telling you they were and you were trying to protect people exactly and i understand that in the schizophrenic brain however don't shoot me okay. but <laughs> <laughs> my comment to her is he did lose his freedom he's in a mental institution for right. the rest of his life. He is not free. He is not walking around the streets, you know, helping other people. Why are you giving me that look? No reason. <laughs> let's, but let's it, touch back on that in a moment. We'll leave that where it is. Okay. We'll come back. But that's my answer <laughs> to her. He was committed to a, I mean, a mental institution. A mental institution. Yeah. That was what he was given. So he was taking off, taken off the streets by the judge. He was, yes. So for yeah. Anyway, we'll come. We'll we'll, we'll, we'll circle back. Okay. Uh, the the whole thing is, if you are not criminally responsible because your your brain literally was working against you and you couldn't you couldn't make like what a normal person like that a decision that a normal quote unquote normal person's brain would make. Mm -hmm. Was it a voluntary crime that you committed? Right. Like, yes, you did it, like physically, physically did the did thing, it. but was it voluntary is my question. Because you 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 couldn't what am I trying to say? Couldn't stop yourself? Maybe. Yeah, maybe you couldn't. I mean just the way like Justified homicide is a thing. Yes. Like, there's justifiable homicide. I thought this person was going to kill me, and I killed them first, and you, I was justified in doing that. No jail time for me, because it was, it was a me or them kind of situation. Right. And honestly, that's what he thought. Right. He thought he was a danger to him. He literally thought that this man was a demon and an alien, somehow both, who was sent there to kill everybody. Even though he was sleeping. Right. And I'm not saying that is uh, sane or logical, because obviously it's not. But in his brain that wasn't firing properly, it was perfectly logical. Right. So I just, I have a an issue with anyone who c takes another person's life, they need to lose their freedom forever. I don't, I don't agree with that. Just at, at all, period. But especially if you... If it happened because you were not, or it happened while you were not criminally responsible. Right. I don't think that just because someone has taken a life, they should be in prison forever. There are, there's a whole spectrum of things that can, you know, 
kind of lean into that decision and and change the amount of time that, you know, maybe they should be in prison. But I don't think every single person who has ever taken a life, life sentence, no parole. Right. I don't think that needs to be the case. That would be filling the prisons and nobody else would be there. Yeah, because we're not already doing that. And (laughs) (laughs) Right. But we have people that are there for other reasons. That would be filling the prisons for just one thing. I get why she's upset. I get it. It's her kid. I couldn't imagine being in that position. No. But I don't think sweeping changes to the law so that every person needs to be in jail forever is is the way to, to, to go no. about it. Um, now, as for Tim's father, after the sentencing, he was terrified of the idea that Vince Lee could receive some medication and some counseling and be released back into society. That scared him. Which I get. I, I get, totally yes. get that. Because you don't know. Like we talked about in the Alyssa Lamb episode about how people with bipolar disorder taking their medicine properly is a, a difficult thing to maintain mm-hmm. for them. Because then they're feeling better and then they're like, oh, I don't, you don't need right. it. Either that or it's making you feel sick or something mm-hmm. like that. And then you don't want to take it because you don't want to feel sick. Right. That's the same kind of thing with people who have schizophrenia. Taking your medicine regularly and properly is very difficult. Mm-hmm. So you never know if they're going to, you know, kind of fall off the cliff with that and stop doing it. Right. It's entirely possible and maybe even probable because it's just it's so prevalent in in people with certain types of mental illnesses that taking medicine is just really hard to keep up with. Mm -hmm. Now, and unmedicated is that's where you get in trouble. Right. And like we talked about in the Yuba County mm-hmm. that, you know, he would have showed up somewhere. Exactly. I was just thinking mm-hmm. that he was unmet. He had been doing really well for a long time, taking all his medicine. He's doing great. If he had been for a couple of months, much less however many years it's been, mm-hmm. just like three months without his medicine, he would have turned up somewhere because when he was not medicated, he was causing trouble. He was right. assaulting people. He was getting into trouble left and right. Yeah. And so he would have showed up somewhere. Exactly. Yet they're like, you know, he got out. He got away with everything. Yeah. And no. Everybody else died. No, honey, that man's dead. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He's dead. No, <laughs> you just didn't find the body. Exactly. <laughs> um, <clears throat> now, let's talk a little bit about the aftermath of this incident. The week after the incident, Greyhound Canada pulled a series of nationwide ads, rightly so, I think, that had the slogan, there's a reason you've never heard of bus rage. Yeah, that look you just gave me. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, totally a good idea to just might want to get rid of that out of there. <laughs> get rid of those. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I have. Right? <laughs> I actually uh, now that you mention it. Uh, <laughs> um, the incident also led to numerous calls and petitions demanding increased security on intercity buses. Which, like, like okay, I can see where you're coming from. I mean, it's going to give a lot of people jobs because there's a ton of buses right that travel across the country mm-hmm. i'm not saying it's a bad idea i'm just saying there are logistics that would need to be worked out right a couple civil suits of course also Always. came from the incident now first of all the the obvious one is the family of tim mclean obvious that one's a little more obvious mm-hmm. they brought about a lawsuit of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars against greyhound The Attorney General of Canada, for some reason, and Vince Lee. Why the Attorney General? I I couldn't make I couldn't make that work in my brain. Why they would add him? I'm assuming it was a him. I don't know Uh, (laughs) that person. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Maybe they talked to them and they made him mad or something. I don't know. know. That's I'm just like, what did they have to do with? any of this but whatever i mean really greyhound doesn't really have anything to do with it it was a passenger exactly yeah (laughs) but that's the thing uh now all i could find or i guess the latest i could find was from 2018 and as of that article the lawsuit was still in limbo i haven't seen anything newer than that when i was in the last five years there's no new information potentially yeah who knows maybe they settled it out of court and like sealed it i mean i don't know anything could be possible now that one was kind of an obvious one that you could see coming right the next one 
really stupid. Uh, <laughs> not e- I'm not even going to let you think about it for yourself. I'm just going to tell you. It's really stupid. I already have a, a, something that's stupid in my head, but you know, I'm going to see if you're going to tell me something. I always have something stupid in my head, but that's just me. It's just because I'm... Just because you're you. A 12-year-old boy in my brain. <laughs> um, two bus passengers also filed a lawsuit against Vince Lee, Greyhound, the RCMP, and the Canadian government for being exposed to the beheading. Okay. Yeah, if you didn't hear, that was her going, (laughs) that was that noise that you might have not caught. Uh, They were seeking $3 million in damages. The parents of the freaking... Kid that got murdered only went in 150. They went three million because they were exposed to a beheading. Mm-hmm. Because they bought tickets on this bus that was crazy person. And apparently, Greyhound, the RCMP, and the Canadian government should have known better. Yeah. Uh, this well, maybe he should have known better. They should have known better because it's two people. They should have known better not to buy a tickets for the bus. I guess. I guess everyone's wrong here. I mean, if the government's <laughs> responsible, then maybe you should be responsible. Yeah, too. I'm just like. When I read that, I was just like, are you fucking serious? Uh, Thankfully, their suit was dropped. (laughs) Their attorney's like, "Ah, you're funny. (laughs) I mean, I guess I could still get paid for doing this for you, but... (laughs) (laughs) Not if it's one of those lawyers that you only get paid if they get paid. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Hopefully for the lawyer. Right. It was not that situation. (laughs) Hopefully. Uh, Be like, uh, this isn't a case you're winning. (laughs) Like, you found a lawyer to do that for you? on. Whatever. There's, I mean, there's bottom feeders everywhere. Think of all the people <laughs> in this world that didn't deserve a defense, but got one. Exactly. Yeah. I know. I know. Um, now, what happened to Vince Lee? You might be wondering. Uh, excellent question. You're just full of them. Uh, <laughs> on June the 3rd, 2010, Lee was granted supervised outdoor walks within his mental health facility as voted by the Provincial Review Board. Okay. okay, cool. It's good. Get, you got to get some vitamin D, you know? I mean, yeah. Vitamin D is very important. Very important. I know because I am instructed to take it by my doctor because my levels are dangerously low. Um, <laughs> Jeez, go outside and list, lay in the sun. God, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, a vampire. Jeez. First of all, outside, hate it. Second <laughs> of all, Daystar burns. <laughs> <laughs> No, thank you. (laughs) Pass. I'll just take the vitamins. (laughs) Um, Now, if there's not swimming involved, I'm not interested. Exactly. That's basically it. Um, Almost a year later, May 30th, 2011, the CBC, which is the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, they reported that Lee was responding well to his psychiatric treatment. Awesome. And his doctor recommended that he receive more freedoms to be phased in over a period of several months. What type of freedoms? Okay. We're, you know, we're going to get there. Um, <laughs> so, okay. He's doing well. That's good. That's great. I don't, I, no one uh, deserves to live in that world in their brain. Right. You know, uh, you deserve help. So I'm glad that you're, you're getting it and you're doing well. Good. You deserve to be safe in your brain. Yeah. You deserve to, of all places to, to be safe, your brain should be top of the list. Right. Unfortunately, I don't know what happened. <laughs> right. But yeah, good. You're getting help. That's awesome. Great. I'm glad. Perfect. Now, the following May, it was reported that Lee had been granted temporary passes that would allow him out of the Selkirk Mental Health Center for visits to the town of Selkirk, supervised by a nurse and peace officer. Okay. He's supervised, you know, he's got a nurse with him. He's got a peace officer with him. What's a peace officer? I'm guessing like a low level, like not a cop necessarily, but like, like they don't, wouldn't, wouldn't have like a weapon necessarily, but. So like a security guard? Maybe like trained to deal with certain situations, you know. Bodyguards, security guards, something like that. Sure. Why not? We'll go sure. with that. <laughs> if you're Canadian, you can chime in. Let us know. Uh, but we don't live there. <laughs> we don't, unfortunately. Um, so, okay. Whatever. He's He's got his, his uh, you know, he's doing well. He's earning this. It's not, they're not just like, uh, yeah, whatever. Just let, get, let him out. Whatever. You know. <laughs> right. He's earned the privileges. 
He's getting his privileges granted. Yes. Exactly. They're still keeping him under, you know, supervision. Yes, he is supervised. In an interview with the Schizophrenia Society of Canada, Lee spoke publicly for the first time, sharing that he was being prescribed olanzapine, which is an atypical antipsychotic that can be used for both new onset schizophrenia and long term maintenance of schizophrenia. And he was also learning about his disease and ways to cope with it in a healthy manner. Fantastic. I love that for you, and I wish everyone had access to that. Right. He also spoke about his guilt over the killing of Tim McLean, saying that he would never be able to forget what happened on the bus, and he believes that he will never be happy again, like, because he's done this. Right. He also acknowledged that he understands the McLean family likely will never forgive him, I mean, but, I mean, yeah, understandable. I wouldn't expect them to. No. I mean, some people do, and more power to you for being able to, but I don't think I would be able to. I mean, you beheaded my son and ate him, so yeah. I don't think you're going to get forgiveness from me. I, I would not be one of those. Uh, I'm not a better person. <laughs> yeah, I would not be one of those better people to, to forgive. But he understood. Okay. So Good. He's, he's, he's like, I, I understand. He's worked through it with his therapy. Right. And I get where you're coming from. I gets it. I don't blame you. Right. <laughs> He, uh, he did have parting words for Tim's mother, though. He said, I would like to say to Tim McLean's mother, I am sorry for killing your son. I am sorry for the pain I have caused. I wish I could reduce the pain. Okay. okay. He says he's sorry. Obviously, it doesn't really necessarily mean much, I'm sure, in this situation. Mm -hmm. But he is apologetic. He's remorseful. He feels guilt over it. Like, these are good things. Right. He has feelings. Right. And then it's good. And he's mm -hmm. like, I get it that you hate me and you will never forgive me. I understand that. I am sorry for what it's worth. You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> right. If I could undo it, I would, you know, like, but th this is good. He right. gets it. That's good. Now, in March of 2014, Lee was allowed to have unsupervised visits to Selkirk starting at 30 minutes and ev eventually expanding to full day unsupervised trips into town. Okay. Okay. The following year in February, 2015, Lee was given unsupervised day passes to visit Winnipeg as long as he carried a functioning cell phone with him. Three months later, he was granted passes to group homes in the community. Why? Cause he's doing well, but why is he going to group homes? I don't know, just to chill. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, hang out with the kids, you know? No, no, I don't think they're kid group homes. I think it's for, like, adult homes. Oh, just... Okay. In my mind, I'm kind of picturing, like, a um, halfway house kind of deal, but not necessarily, like, full of people who just got out of jail, you know? Maybe people who um, are transitioning transitioning into the community from being in, like, a mental institution or something like that. Like, I'm thinking along those lines. I'm thinking, like, kids group home. No, no, no. Not with kids. Okay. Uh, the following year, everything is happening every year, like, once a year here, uh, February 2016, it was reported that Lee legally changed his name to Will Baker. And he was seeking to leave his group home to live independently. On February 26, 2017... He won the right to live alone upon the recommendation of the Criminal Code Review Board. Hmm. Just uh, like two weeks before this, on February 10th, 2017, the Manitoba Criminal Code Review Board ordered that Vince Lee, now going by Will Baker, mm -hmm. be discharged. He was granted an absolute discharge, meaning there would be no legal obligations or restrictions pertaining to his independent living. Now, this is where I kind of, I don't know about that. Like, okay, he's served some time. He has, it's been like nine years at this point almost. Right. Um, he's doing all the things he needs to do. He's earning these privileges. Like, this is all great. Mm -hmm. He's going to therapy. He's taking his medicine. He's learning about his disease and how to handle it, you know, how to cope in a, in a healthy way. This is all mm -hmm. fantastic. Right. Okay. I'm okay with the discharging him. Like I can, 
I can make myself okay with that. I'm less okay with the uh, absolute discharge, which is essentially like us saying, like, you know how when you're on parole, you have to go to see a parole officer and there's like conditions like you can't. Maybe you can't, like, uh, hang out with certain friends of yours or you can't drink. Uh, you have to do, you know, you have to pass drug tests, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. This is essentially you're being paroled and that's it. No conditions. Done. That's where I'm like, well, maybe just check up on him a little bit. He ate someone. Maybe <laughs> just, just keep an eye on him a little bit. Maybe. Uh, but they didn't. He had... No restrictions and absolute discharge. So that's why when you were talking about that uh, a few minutes ago, I was like, (laughs) don't say anything. (laughs) Uh, Because he did get out. He was not in for life. And I mean, nothing has come out about him doing anything since then. Well, that's good. So that's, yeah, that's good. He Um, is, um, what do they call it? Reformed? I guess so. Yeah. As long as he's doing what he needs to do with taking his medicine and therapy and all that stuff. And that's great because, like I said, he wasn't – he was deemed not criminally responsible. He – and his mom doesn't – Tim's mom doesn't agree with this, and I understand it, but he was not responsible for what happened. And it's kind of a hard concept to think about. Like, what do you mean he wasn't responsible? He literally did it. You know what I mean? But, like – Well, I'm just thinking as a parent, if someone killed my child Mm – and especially in the way that he did it, mm-hmm. I don't care what the fuck you say, you did it. Yeah, like I said, I but, understand where she's coming from. Right, exactly. It's like, I know what she's thinking. You did it. You can't say he didn't do it, because he did. Right. right, and he never said he didn't do it. Right, but it, she's probably, I don't know, but just what I'm thinking is she's probably someone that's never had to deal with mental illness. Maybe. Either that or she uh, not properly properly deal with it. Because if you've dealt with mental illness at any point in your life, you understand Mm -hmm. at least some points of mental illness. Yeah. I mean, there's times when I've been in my in my deep, like the depth of depressive episodes and there's things that I've done or said or whatever. And I'm just like. You. Every, I'm sure everyone has done something that they just felt like they didn't have control over that. Right. I mean, is even when it comes down to, like, eating chips out of a bag of chips and all of a sudden all the chips are gone. Right. Like, <laughs> exactly. you did it, but you you weren't controlling that. It was just like it happened. Right. You know what I mean? If like, it's something as e- – not easy, but as simple as a breakup, you know – what woman hasn't gone through a breakup and had ice cream and chips for dinner for right. a, a week at a time? Right. You know, drowning her sorrows in her, you know, Hagen dazs You know, whatever. Slash in a tire, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. I've never done that. Um, <laughs> but, you know, everybody has those those points, like you said, where it's just mindless mm-hmm. actions. Right. You're not thinking about doing it. Right. Whether it's eating bags of chips without realizing you ate the whole bag. Mm hmm. Or, you know, committing murder on a bus. Well, but- committing murder on a bus because God was telling you that that person was an evil demon alien that right. was going to kill everybody. You were protecting people. In your mind, you were doing what was right. Right. That's where I, I'm caught up on on her saying that people that have, even even when they're not criminally responsible, should be in prison for the rest of their lives. I, I don't think that's the solution. No. That's, that's not just the trying to make yourself feel better. By punishing the person, not by trying to rehabilitate anybody or or right anything. You just want that person punished forever, and that's all it is. Yeah. And I understand the feeling to want that, but that is not the way to make society better. It's not fixing anything. It's not. So I'm not with her on that at all, <laughs> as, as you can tell. <laughs> uh, but I am a little... There's there's some question marks about the absolute discharge part. Obviously, yes. But, I mean, they should have followed up. Literally. Yeah, I, I would think at least just follow up, make sure he's taking his meds and shit. Like, come on. At, at this point, everything's been yearly. So let's just do a yearly yeah, checkup just, with the doctors or something. On. You know, something. But like I said, I haven't seen anything about him doing anything. So I guess he's doing well. 
Well, good for him. Now, real quickly before we finish, the horrors of the day that Tim McLean died, uh, they have affected many people long after the evening of July 30th, 2008. I would assume. Yeah. Uh, We're just going to touch on a couple of them. Uh, There was a fellow passenger named Stephen Allison who was sitting right across the aisle from Tim and Vince Lee. And he has been haunted by this incident ever since. He he understood why the court made the decision they did to opt for treatment instead of prison, which I fully agree with. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he's still scarred by what he saw that night. I mean, who wouldn't be? Why wouldn't you be? Right. He was on this bus with his wife, by the way. Uh, and a year after the incident, he spoke in an interview about how his and his wife's lives have been affected by what happened that night. Mm -hmm. He said, I used to be a very outgoing and talkative person and have lots of friends, but now I just kind of sit around and don't do much. Like, definitely, he's got PTSD. I mean, let's... I mean, he doesn't want to trust people. Like, you know, just a random person just (laughs) killed this person randomly on a bus, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, And both he and his wife, who at the time were university students... They both struggled to stay in school. Steven, before this, was an A student, but afterwards he found it difficult to just go to class, which I don't blame you. I don't either. Yeah. And his wife wound up dropping out of school altogether. Again, I don't blame you. Right. Like, you're both suffering from PTSD from this. Right. Um, Now, another unnamed passenger who was already suffering from an undisclosed mental illness She gave birth years after the bus attack and had her newborn baby taken away by social workers because they were concerned that her illness, combined with the PTSD she suffered from witnessing this attack, made her unfit to care for her new daughter. Wow. Yeah. Her baby was put in foster care for the first 18 months of her life until she was placed with her maternal grandmother, who was later granted sole custody of the baby, with the discretion to give her daughter, the child's mother, quote, generous and reasonable access to help with decision making and care. So it's up to her if her daughter is allowed to be around the kid, make decisions about, you know, school or vaccinations or whatever, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and this woman, she says that she still has nightmares and trouble using public transportation. I don't fucking blame <laughs> you, right? <laughs> I'll walk. It's yeah, 20 miles. Just, okay, I'm uh, good. I don't, I don't know about that. I'm not going. <laughs> I'm just going to save my pennies, get a car. <laughs> um, she also says that she gets nervous around strangers and has a hard time trusting people. Again, I don't fucking blame you. Right. She has, however, developed a touch of empathy for Lee. She said, in some sense, yes, I've forgiven him. I've been able to normalize that he is a person with a mental illness. It doesn't give him a free pass, but it gives a little better understanding of what's going on. To me, Vincent Lee is not a monster. He's just someone that unfortunately went through undiagnosed mental illness. And to me, that kind of sums up the whole thing. Right. He's not just some like psychopathic monster out there just killing, you know, willy nilly for funsies. Mm -hmm. Right. Undiagnosed mental illness. That's all you need to know about this, you know? (laughs) When he should have been diagnosed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Next, we come to Chris Alguire. And this was the truck driver who stopped to help when he saw this bus pull over. Okay. He also struggles with PTSD after the incident. He was unfortunate enough to witness Lee decapitating Tim. And he experiences PTSD in the form of rage and alcoholism. That's not a good good thing for a truck driver. No, it's not. In an interview 10 years after the incident, so in 2018, he said, After 10 years, I have never stopped mourning the life of Timothy McLean. I've become an alcoholic to help me sleep at night. I hate what challenges me daily now. And as far as Lee goes, Alguire doesn't understand why he'd be given an absolute discharge with the ability to repeat his actions. So again... I'm with you on the absolute discharge question. (laughs) And last but not least, the Toronto Sun reported on July 17th, 2014, that one of the first officers on the scene, Corporal Ken Barker of the RCMP, had committed suicide 
and that the PTSD he suffered as a result of the incident was a contributing factor. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And lastly, I'll leave you with a truly heartbreaking quote from Tim's mother, Carol. She said, nothing changed for everybody else. It was so maddening to me that the whole world didn't just stop. Mine did. Yeah, that it. It hurts. It gets you in the feels, that one. Mm -hmm. Uh, And, you know, I see what you're I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, I, I don't understand. Like because I've been through it, but like I can put myself in the mindset that I never want to be in. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, that is the story of the horrifying murder of Tim McLean. That's horrifying. Yeah. I think that might've been our worst episode so far. <laughs> like, like worse as in like the, the, the crazy, the crime is the, the, the yeah. Ter- most terrible. <laughs> the crime is the worst. Well, I don't know. We had dead kids, but we, you know, yeah, but I mean, this is pretty, I mean, he de- he decapitated and and ate some and ate yeah. someone. So, so my friend Natalie was supposed to come and be a guest with us today, mm-hmm. but she had to go look at houses because priorities she to have a home, whatever. But uh, I texted Get her it together, Linda. <laughs> I texted her <laughs> and was like, "Just admit that you don't want to hear a story about a man being killed and partially eaten on a bus." And she was just like, "Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> uh." What was that? <laughs> and then, and then a few minutes later, uh, I was like, "What? What? What did you not understand about that? Uh, what's the problem?" <laughs> like, I thought it was clear, but she was like, oh, "Now you're making me hungry," and I was like, "I'm sorry." <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> me telling you that a man was partially eaten on a bus after being murdered is making you hungry, and I'm the problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, you are the problem rude (laughs) all right so let's do a very i have a short uh decompression chamber i was like what's that thing called (laughs) uh i have a short one okay uh so let's just get right into it the taco bell hotel i need to go what how what so i was bored at work uh yesterday and (laughs) i was on my phone i was scrolling on instagram as I'm wont to do to look for yummy recipes and <laughs> yummy yep. recipes. So Buzzfeed, did you send me the one we made tonight? Or did I? I did. Yes, I did. Yes. I, did. Yes. I did send that to you. Okay. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm scrolling and Buzzfeed is there and it has a thing that says something about the Taco Bell hotel. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> so I go to the story and apparently this opened in 2019 in Palm Springs and it's called The Bell. I think it's The Bell of Palm Springs or something like that. Okay. It is entirely Taco Bell themed. And I'll try to find some pictures to post uh, just because it's amazing. But um, the key cards for the rooms are decorated like little sauce packets. <laughs> That's awesome. Pillows. There's sauce packet pillows. <laughs> awesome. There's like sauce packet, you know, like on the wall, like the you know, mild, hot, whatever, Mm -hmm. just decorating the walls. The pool floaties look like sauce packets. Like everything is sauce packet. Did I say sauce? (laughs) Sauce packet is sauce packet-esque. I love it. Like the little key card. I'm like, I'm just going to steal this. Is that okay? (laughs) How much does this cost? (laughs) How much if I lose my car, my key card? How much do I have to pay you if I lose? (laughs) Lose it. (laughs) What do you mean? Why am I air quoting lose? What are you talking about? (laughs) How many people lose their cards? I know, right? (laughs) Um, And then make it a build it into the price. Right. (laughs) You have to keep your key card. (laughs) um, They have like the bar where you get like themed drinks and and they even have a room where you can go in and make like different flavored Baja blasts or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then uh like the food is like fancy but still like in the theme. Still Taco Bell. Taco right. Bell esque. Right. And my favorite part is you can get a Taco Bell manicure. Oh, tacos on my nails. I want tacos and I want sauce packets. On my nails. Your nails aren't big enough for sauce packets. Don't talk about my tiny little nail beds in public. <laughs> I cannot help that I have baby nails. So do I. 
Donald. Every time I get my nails done, they're like, oh, it's so tiny. It's so cute. Like, yes, thank you. <laughs> Makes it difficult to have nice nails, but thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Taco Bell Hotel. And I saw this and I was telling Natalie about it. And I was like, what the fuck? I need to know how much this is to stay there. And so I'm looking and all I could find was they're like, we're not currently accepting reservations. And I was like... Because your Taco Bell hotel, you booked for 2026. Right. So I'm like, now I need to know how much it costs to stay there. Like, just call them. Say, <laughs> when you, <laughs> can I get on the wait list for 2027? <laughs> yeah, I just, in a few years, I'll uh, save up enough to come out. Um, I just need to know. Right. Uh, I'll probably never be able to afford it, but I need to know. I need to know. So if you know, let me know. And, and send us your pictures if you've been. I was about to say, if you've been, you better fucking tell me about it. <laughs> I need to know. Then you need to send it to the email address yes. and um, tell us all about it. Yes. Please and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> She's not demanding at all. Not at all. All right. So that was our very quick decompression chamber. Can I mention one thing? Maybe. We shouldn't have been talking about Taco Bell after we did a story about eating people. Yeah. <laughs> It's about a hotel. Still not talk about whatever. We it I mean the meat is questionable bull. Shh. Questionable bull bull. A bubble bull. A bubble bubble bubble. I did it on purpose. Sure you did. Whatever. Um all right. Well, uh anything else you want to add? I got notion. No? Okay, good. I'm ready for dinner. I know, right? Shockingly. Thank you so much for joining us for this especially horrific episode of Macabre Storytime. To keep up to date on all things macabre, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube at Macabre Storytime. Or you can email us at macabrestorytime at gmail.com. And of course, if you're interested in supporting the show, you can absolutely do that by heading over to our new Patreon page at patreon.com slash macabre storytime. The three tiers to choose from if you want to support the show. One dollar a month gets you a death uh, gets you the membership for a death water drinker. If for three dollars a month you get to be a mind bobbler, shut it. <laughs> she can't read sideways. <laughs> I am trying to read sideways. <laughs> and for five dollars a month, you can join the Terrible People Club. Yes, and as a Patreon supporter, you'll have exclusive access to bonus episodes behind the scenes content also episodes earlier because we release episodes on thursday but on patreon you can get them on monday i didn't know that yeah. oh i'm not a supporter bitch <laughs> <laughs> now, i support myself <laughs> but yeah um yeah on patreon i post episodes on monday can we listen on monday mm -hmm. oh sweet yeah, I have to wait till Thursday. Yeah, I thought I had to wait till Thursday. No, I mean, you can log into the Patreon well, page and listen. I'm a few episodes behind right now because I've been so busy. What like, the fuck? I know, right? I'm in the middle of... Are you even a part of this show? <laughs> <laughs> My work has been crazy busy. So uh -huh. I was like, hey, you listen to podcasts. You need to be paying attention. No, I'm in the middle of... <sighs> What's the one before John List? Oh, the New York Zodiac? New York Zodiac. That's the one I'm in the middle of. Got it, got it, got it. That's the one Piper was listening to the other day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whoopsie. Um, so in addition to those things, there also will be stickers. I have ordered the sample of the three stickers. So I'm just waiting the, that sample to reach me so that I can look at them and say, yes, this is perfect. And then we can order them. So they right. are in the works we need to check quality to make sure that oh, we absolutely. want to order extras yeah i'm not going to order like 50 stickers and then be like these are fucking awful <laughs> i gotta right. make sure they actually look good <laughs> so we gotta um we gotta make sure that they are good to exactly. give to you guys yes. and also we need to start saying this because i don't think we have been another way you can support the show without supporting it with your money which i mean you know you can do that too <laughs> but <laughs> does help regardless of whether or not you become a patreon Go and like the podcast, rate the podcast, give it stars, give it uh, a, a review. Share it with your friends. Share it with your friends. Uh, post it on Facebook, you know, whatever. Um, go to our Facebook page and like it. Instagram. Go to our Instagram and like it. I know I need to get better about 
TikTok. Don't at me. Um, <laughs> but, you know, go and support the show everywhere that you see it. You know, listening helps out. Rating it helps out. And reviewing it helps out. Those things help boost it in the algorithms. Plus so. the reviews help us know how we're doing. Exactly. And it's it's nice. Uh, be nice, though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's nice to know that people like it. You know. Right. So, so, yeah. Rate, review, become a Patreon. Uh, all those fun <laughs> things. And once again, thank you so much for listening. And until next time. Maybe don't go on public transportation. Just, yeah, unless just you drive. <laughs> drive, walk. Yeah, it's a good thing I didn't know about this episode, or this episode, that I didn't know about this story before I moved to Prague, because it's like all public transportation. <laughs> right. I would have just been like, <laughs> <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> I have a story about Prague, but not for the podcast, but yeah. Interesting. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. Until next time. Bye. Bye. We're going to go eat dinner. Yeah, yummy. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>